Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. First I was a Catholic girl, loved the mass, I watched the swirl of smoke from candles burning, while Mary looked up yearning. I got confirmed and I confessed, I really felt that I was blessed, plus I loved my uniform, so did the boy who lived next door, but something changed. When I became of age And all those things I thought were true Someday I'd break the big time Hello and welcome to Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. This is WOZO Radio 103.9 LP uh, FM live right here in Knoxville, Tennessee. Today is Wednesday, uh, July 25th, <clears throat> excuse me, at 7 p.m. So if that's not that eight in time on your watch, then uh, you're listening to a rebroadcast or a podcast. I'm Doubter 5, and as usual, we have on the phone with us Wombat. Say hi, Wombat. Hey, it's the Wombat! Yeah, you're coming What's up, everybody? Loud and clear. And uh, <laughs> uh, we'll be going into uh, Atheism Talk radio show. Uh, we talk about free thought, radio, rational thought, humanisms, and the sciences. Conversely, we also talk about religion, religious faiths, gods, holy books, and superstition. If you get the feeling that you're the only non-believer in Knoxville, well, you're just you're not. Wrong. Nope. Uh, there are several atheists, uh, free-thinking, and rationalist groups that exist right here in Knoxville, and we'll tell you how you can connect with them a little bit after the mid-show break. Also, did you know that there's an atheist call-in TV show broadcasting here in Knoxville? Did you know that one? Yes, yes I did. You and did. I'm super... Yes, I did. I'm super excited for it. First of all, you didn't think they'd do it, but they bring back Snake. Snake, amazing. Back in the brawl uh, days. What? We got P2. We got Ice Climbers. This is going to be the best one ever. I I'm super no idea excited. This is going to be the best <laughs> ever. No, Yo, no, let me tell no. You. Best Smash, right? I, I got Dan on the man. He agrees with me. Dan, you agree. Look, best look, Smash ever, right? Look, look. When I saw Snake, I about died. I oh, my gosh. Oh, my lie. gosh. Everybody's here. Everybody's here. I'm, super, I'm crying well, right now. That's all this great. That's ever. wonderful. That's but it has nothing to do right? with the TV show that that's we right. broadcast. The Atheist Society of Knoxville Broadcasts and the, with the Rationalists of East Tennessee, Rationalists, uh, TV show every Wednesday night. As a matter of fact, it's on right now. If you happen to turn on your TV and go to Comcast Channel 12, you'll see it broadcasting. However, don't do that. Stay here. Do not change that channel or go change that um, box that you're listening to. But you can watch it. Also, uh, you can watch the archives on YouTube by going to YouTube and doing a search for three words. That would be Free Thought Forum Knoxville. But we hope you stick around for our radio show. And in spite of what Steve Martin would have you think, there are a lot of atheist songs out there. And you'll be hearing some of them right here on this program and generally on this station as they're in rotation. Now, uh, Wombat, you want to introduce your guest and oh, the yes. subject? Standing on, top, standing on top of the world's windiest mountain, we have Dan, the man, back with the plan. He is one of the greatest SE enthusiasts and practitioners on the net. SE? He's been going around America. Yeah, SE. Mm-hmm. We're going to talk about it. Trust me. Trust me. We're going to get into it. We're yeah, going to get into are, it. Those are some big claims. I don't know. If <laughs> hey, 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 hey. I wouldn't say it if it wasn't true. I wouldn't say it if it isn't true. Let me tell you something. Right. We got a great treat. He's been on the show again. The last, the last episode's currently somewhere near Neptune and going at light speed uh-huh. towards <laughs> Andromeda. But this time we got it recorded. Double locked. Dan the Man, one of the greatest, one of the best to do it. He's running his own TV shows. He's doing his own speeches, and he's going to tell us all about the wonderful world of SC. Dan the Man, glad to have you back. What's up? What's up? What's up? This is Objectively Dan. I'm here. I'm alive. It's great to be back. Thanks for having me on. It is great to have you back. Listen, Dan, you've been up to a lot of stuff, but why don't we start with some of the basics? What is SC? What are you all about, and what are you trying to sell us? Man, what is SC and what am I trying to sell you? Great questions. I'm not trying to sell anybody anything. I wish I could make money off of this stuff. Uh-huh. Honestly, sometimes. 
uh, as much work that I put into it. But no, street epistemology is just this method uh, that people can use to talk to people about their beliefs. It doesn't matter if it's religious or political or whatever. It's just kind of a good, objective way to have really good conversations about how people feel about the things that they feel. Um, so recently I just went to Columbus, Ohio, and I gave my very first talk on it uh, for the Secular Student Alliance. Um, my talk was one of the most popular ones there. I'm really proud about that. He um, says one of, but it was the definitive best one. And can we just say one more thing just before you get in more into that? You didn't yeah, just yeah. go to Ohio. Wasn't there like a whole thing going on just to get you up there? Yeah, so um, so basically, I'm a college student, and I can't afford to go to places like Ohio. I live in Texas, for reference, so, you know, it's not like uh, I'm not a most – I don't have the fun, you know what I mean? So I had a Kickstarter – not a Kickstarter, excuse me. I had a GoFundMe set up so that people could help me kind of get to this conference and also to get swag for the conference, so buying T-shirts and stuff that we gave away. We didn't profit off of anything that we got there. Um, and uh, it was a huge success. I got all the money I needed. I got 1500 bucks in a week, which was really, really awesome. Um, and uh, it was really great to see everybody come together for that. So, yeah, it, well, and now my – sorry, say again. I can't... <laughs> oh, I'm right here. I'm right here. Keep going. There you go. Yeah, so, um, yeah, and, and that talk is now available on YouTube now. If you go to my channel, Objectively Dan, you can check that out and see what I've been up to. Also, follow me on Twitter. So, nice. Yeah. <laughs> so let's, let's just back up. Follow the Earth kid, you know, doesn't know what's happening, can't afford anything. He's, he's using his fingers as forks, right? Like he's, he's rubbing sticks together. He calls out to the Internet. The Internet's like, we will help you, Dan. And Dan is Basically. like, I got you. I got your back. I'm going to pay this back. Goes all the way to Ohio to do speeches on SC, to do workshops, to get swag, to get recruits. Not only crushes his, you know, whole seminar, but actually sets up a, a, a league, a, a set of allies across America uh, that have cells across all the secular student uh, alliances all across the country and are allowing more people to practice SE, spreading its words and just helping more people have these really comfortable conversations with people about what used to be uncomfortable topics. Dan, I'm so happy with you, but that's not even cream of the crop, is it? Yeah, yeah. So uh, I, I didn't get to mention that, but yeah, I did help out. Um, I, I started this idea of connecting different Secular Student Alliance campus groups with people from our Street Epistemology Facebook pages and stuff. So now everybody has access to like a mentor so that if they ever need resources or if they never need somebody to come teach at their campuses or stuff, they can go ahead and find us. So that was really awesome. But also, I have been talking with the Atheist Community of Austin. Oh! Shows. Like, the mecca of atheist you, entertainment. You, you may have heard of such shows time. such as The Atheist Experience <laughs> and uh, Talk Heathen. Yeah. And I have been doing some test episodes for my own call-in show. He sure has! Very excellent. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's been pretty rad. And so we're doing another test episode this Friday at 6.30 Central. Um, and so we're not broadcasting it live. But we are um, taking in live calls, and we're trying out some different segments and stuff, too. I'm actually going to be uh, joined with my good buddy, Genetically Modified Skeptic. Oh, He's going cool. to be my, my co-host for that day. Um, so I, I, don't, I, I should memorize the number because this is going to be my new show. But it's the same number as the Atheist Experience. If you go check out their website and you, and you call that number. Well, how did, if you um, were taking and, live calls, how did people know to call you in if you're not broadcasting live? I, I know, I know. It's on the, it's on the <laughs> show. It's like I'm not used to this whole. I, I'm not used to this whole broadcasting thing yet, where I have to remember all the details and write. I mean, I'm standing in the middle of a park right now, outside of you know, trying to trying to talk to you guys. But yeah, yeah. Um, it's out there. I, I'm sorry, I don't have it on me right now. But if you look it up, it's there. That's right. Probably, okay. Cool. Yeah. Hey, I can. I can tell you broadcasting the show is the easiest part. It's recording the show yeah. afterwards. That's always the tricky part. Apparently. Yeah. Apparently. Yeah. <laughs> so this is how new the show is. Let's just do a quick recap. Dan, objectively Dan. Dan the mm -hmm. man. Uh, just a simple college kid. Had a talk with a guy named Anthony Magnavosco. It inspired him to do some of his own research about why he believes in God, realizes that his standard of evidence was higher than the evidence that he currently had, decided to not only just change his position – and honestly assess whether or not he had enough evidence to believe in the things that he did. But when he realized he didn't, was actually becoming an activist in his own right. Wow, cool. Set up talks in Ohio, drove all the or started a GoFundMe campaign, 
Uh, everyone's supporting him, goes over to Ohio, gets passes up swag, sets up uh, communities all across the nation, and then comes back to Texas, Waco, Texas, and then goes to Austin, Texas, to set up his own call-in TV show with the likes of, you know, the atheist experience uh, and talk heathens. This is like... Yeah. Great, great Cinderella story, and we're so happy of all the work that Dan put in. But it's still new. This just like happened, like what, like this month, right? So Dan is yeah. Your, so this is just are your uh, studies suffering? Episode, so. <laughs> I'm sorry, you gotta say that again. Are your studies suffering because of all this activism? Oh, you know, I got I got two A's on my first two <laughs> summer. Very good. So I'm doing pretty good. Excellent. Now, Not, this current, yeah. This current semester, it's a little, it's not as, um, I'm getting there. It's not over yet. I'll okay. tell you that. So. Okay. How many, how do you not just get automatic A's for just like, <laughs> so Dan's a communication major, right? Mm-hmm. This is like, yeah. exa- this is the dream of any communication student. Be vertical. To start like the semester and end it with like worldwide talks, television show, call in TV shows, radio appearances, left and right. Like who else does that? How you, how do you not, how are you not passing already? Man, I don't know because it's. I wish if I would just went up to the people and be like, "Hey, do you know how cool I am?" Like, look at how I'm doing. <laughs> you know, they could just. I've been there. Unfortunately, that's not how higher education institutions work. <laughs> and that's a good thing that it doesn't. Because you don't yeah. want chumps like me walking around with degrees they didn't actually earn. So yeah, yeah. that's good. I'm gonna ask one last question. Have you figured out a name for the the call-in TV show yet? Okay, so that, this is something we've been kind of workshopping a bit. We really like the name Tell Me More. Okay. Um, the, problem, the problem is NPR had a show called Tell Me More like five years ago that they're not really using anymore. And so we've been trying to get in contact with them to see if we can use that at our name. But yeah. right now um, it's unnamed. It's unnamed pilot as of yet. So um, mm. if you have really cool names, hit me up on Twitter. Send me a message because I'm still looking for those. So okay, Larry, what do you think about all this so far? Well, I think it's great. But we he should probably topic. give his 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 Twitter address. Uh, if he's oh, go for yeah. it, go for it. So that's at objectively Dan. You can find me on there. That's the best way to get in contact with me. I'm okay. also available on the Street Epistemology Facebook groups and stuff. Um, but I'm most active on Twitter and YouTube too. So, but YouTube they're not doing mess- personal messages anymore. So. No. Well, I, I can't wait for for you to start using the studios that Atheist Experience uh, did for uh, for this purpose. Uh, I think it's wonderful, and I think that you'll have a lot of crossover with that group once you start doing it, and they and they start dropping in on you, and vice versa. I think it'd be cool. I think it'd be wonderful. Yeah, yeah, it, you know, it's great. Let me tell you, like those guys, they've been doing it for so long. I've you know, I have some of the people, the same people who help with running the show on the back end for Atheist Experience and producing it are the same people that are helping me get my show off the ground. So I'm working with people who know exactly what they're doing, and I just have to drive down to Austin every weekend, and they're helping me out. Um, so it's it's a blast. It's, yeah. I'm really thankful that yeah. they're there to help me out. I assume you have a, ma- a mailing list or some way to get the word out when you're going to start to do this to the people who are interested. Yeah, so um, basically the atheist, oh, the atheist community of Austin is going to help start plugging my show and uh-huh. stuff once we officially start getting broadcasted and we have a name for this thing. Yeah. Um, and hopefully the Street Epistemology Facebook groups can help out with that too. But, oh, yeah. You know, if, if, <laughs> if, 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 uh, if this radio show doesn't mind sending a few people my way. No, <laughs> not at all. We don't have that great a reach. We right. are low power, but happy to. Oh, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Well, all 43 of our listeners are going to yeah, call in. Yeah. And all, all five watts. <laughs> hey, hey, that's, hey, that's, that's subscribers, baby. Episodes. That's several yeah. episodes of shows right there. Mm-hmm. So, oh, um, cool. Yeah, definitely. Like, and it doesn't have to be uh, theists either. I don't really care. I, um, if people who have questions about the street epistemology, people who have questions for me, or people who have a claim they would like to examine, or if you know someone who'd like that, those are the kinds of people we're kind of looking for for calling in for the show. So. Uh, we've done, like I said, we've done a few test episodes so far. I, we talked to a pastor this last week, and I got an I don't know out of it, and that was really a nice moment. Hey, you that's know? not bad. Uh, so, that's bad. Yeah, it was like, okay, cool. So, like, we can kind of have these conversations that we don't have to pretend like we know everything. That's that's really honest and healthy and, and just really cool. So, so yeah. I, I have a really interesting question. Uh, I think it's cool that you're doing street epistemology in a new format that we've never seen before. Because I've seen the part where, you know, Anthony will go out with a GoPro on his chest, and you have conversations with people face to face. 
I've seen the the nice wonder and myself approach where you set up a table and have people come to you with like a nice sign and, and they sit down. And you have a nice chat with like two webcams and like a mic set up. It's like, it's a bit more tech heavy, but we've never seen a conversation take place in a talk radio format, like in a yeah. in a. So what's the challenges there, and like what are you going to use to inform yourself to be able to do this effectively? Because yeah. this is all new territory. Absolutely. So challenge number one is actually finding people, right? And so, like, the atheist experience is well-known enough and has been long around enough that, you know, tons of people call in all the time. But, right. you know, with my show kind of being brand new, there's no real precedent being set. And it's like, how do you convince somebody to, like, come talk to some dude on a show that's going to be broadcasted that you've never known or you've never met before? You know, it's kind of uh, – that's kind of one of the difficulties. So we've been kind of workshopping some ideas on how to get the word out there more, maybe sending up, like, a live stream somewhere on, like, a campus where people could actually come in at a booth, like, kind of like what Reed does, and sit in and see me on the screen. Oh, you know, and, cool. and going live that way. That's what we've been talking about. Not sure if we can make that happen. But, uh, you know, like stuff like that is something we've been trying. That's really like our, been our biggest problem. The other thing, of course, is when you're having these kinds of conversations, you can take a lot just from seeing the person face to face. Right. And seeing what works and what doesn't, what's, what's, what they're comfortable with and what's not. And I don't right. have really that advantage. Um, and so you kind of lose a little bit of that human interaction. But I still think that the format that we're trying is helpful and still works over uh, uh, kind of this this way of doing things. Uh, it's just going to have its own unique challenges and stuff. Uh, but uh, it, the uh, cool thing is we'll be able to get people from all over and not just in my local geographic area. So uh, mm. that's something to think about too. Yeah, I definitely think some of the disadvantages that you're looking at right now is the lack of that empathetic eye contact situation mm -hmm. where you can read the person's body language, slight shifts and stuff like that and see, is this question making them uncomfortable? Do they feel like we're ready to continue to go further down into the foundation? But on mm -hmm. the contrast, the benefits seem to be really, really high potential because you're not just limited to your local area, like you said. Like, I can't mm -hmm. tell you how many times I've been looking for a place I can set up, like scouting new parks and being like, okay, am I going to be cool here? Is this going to be an area where I, I'm going to have to deal with security? Will I have enough foot traffic? You have, like, one of the best means of contacting several hundred thousand of people, really unlimited. Yeah. And I think that's amazing. I don't know how that's going to add up, but I'm really excited to see what you're going to do with it. And I don't think it could be in better hands. Oh, well, thank you. I really appreciate it. Yeah. And for those of you who don't actually know really this method or have never heard it before, like when we're talking about these ways of talking with people, we're not like psychologically profiling people or anything. Like we honestly just want the people's best uh, like we, we want to have the best conversations that we have, you know, we, we're not trying to necessarily goad people into anything. So really one of the, a lot of people ask me, like, why are you doing this? You know, it seems like you're trying to get people to these conclusions and it's like, not necessarily, right. I want people to reflect on their own beliefs and see whether they think that they really think that these beliefs are true. Sometimes it takes an outsider's perspective to kind of, you know, uh, give, give people a chance to really think about yeah. things. Well, what I always um, say and, is... And there's a lot the, of different reasons why we... we yeah, if they've, sorry, got a, say again? if they've got a good point, I mean, you want to be open to them as much as they're open to you. If they've got a good point right, or good yeah, evidence absolutely. or a good logical argument or something, it could change your mind about things. And that's what, you know, a conversation is all about. It, we're not You're right. not just getting on there preaching. You're asking questions more than, more than making any kind of statement. Yeah, absolutely. And I want to kind of put a friendly face to things as well. And I'm really glad that I'll be able to at least, people will at least be able to see who I am and get to know my story and see who I am before they even get to talk to me if they want to, which is an advantage that uh, even someone like the Wombat doesn't have because they're just meeting somebody in the park. <laughs> you know, and they don't know anything about that guy. So Hey, you, you can say that, but I can do slides. I can go on the slide immediately after I'm done with my conversation. So, yeah, yeah it's well, pretty amazing. Yeah, you can't do yeah, that. That's true. <laughs> Not yet. We have technology for other other things, though, so we'll yeah. see. We'll yeah, when see. you get to the point when you can do VR, SE, then it's, you get the world oh, broken. Man. That would be so that's, cool. That would be so cool. What would be nice that's, is if, if you could convince. I don't know. I don't know how I feel about that. Uh, what would be nice if you could convince people to uh, use their, their phone as a, um, uh, what do you call it, a 
telecommunications as far as uh, using their camera oh, yeah. and talk to you with their phone camera going. That way you would have the visual feedback that you want, and it would be more personal to the people watching uh, on live on air. Uh, that That's might be a, little, a problem with engineering. I don't know, but it's just a thought that no. I, I think might be workable. Uh, one thing, they think that's a great idea. Yeah, My really, mom's deaf, and she will call me sometimes via voice chat, uh-huh. and we'll sign back and forth a little bit. A little bit. She's not as good signing as I am. Yeah. <laughs> She's well, out like, of practice. Like I, I don't know why. Like I, I said, this language for nothing. Like, <laughs> like they said in the Six Million Dollar Man, we have the technology. We can do right, that. That's right. <laughs> right. Uh, if if I go you silent will, for a while, me. if I go silent for a while, it's because. I'm in an unair conditioned room, and if I don't oh. mute the mic, I can't turn on the air conditioning. So I may be sitting here listening to y'all and getting some cool air going. You're so, fine. You're fine. So it's holler at me. So hot over there. Yeah, it is. It's, hot. it's not an issue. But yeah. like, I think Larry has a great point. We do have like this uh, means of video calling. What I get, what I guess, what is like your long term envisionment of you know the Dan show starring Dan? Call me Dan. <sighs> Oh man, so that that's we're definitely not calling it that. Only because I, I like that. The, I like it. I, I would love for because I'm not going to be doing this forever. So I would love <laughs> for somebody to actually to take over for me um, and keep up this kind of calling tradition with SE if possible. Um, mm-hmm. That's like a really long term thing. But uh, honestly, I just like I said before, I want to put a friendly face to this thing. You know, a lot of people who have even watched the atheist experience and these other people, they they kind of get these stereotypes and the and these ideas about people that we're just kind of mean sometimes, or like we just are not really open to people's ideas that we we kind of try to shut people down. And I really don't want that to be the case anymore. I really want to show people this side of conversation that could be had where people can be free to express themselves and not feel like they're going to be shut down. You know, um, I am going to ask questions and I, and I might be skeptical, but I'm not going to say, I, I never tell people, and you do the same thing, Wombat. We never tell people they're wrong, right? Right. We, we never say that. We, we, we always God. give people a chance to express themselves. And, and again, we'll question it, but you know, that's up to them to kind of figure it out, right? How about this? I never say it out loud. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's, okay. And that's fine, right? Because like, right. We, all have our, we all have our own opinions on things. And right. Like, that's, that's, you know. Some of us like to be right. right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but when we have these conversations, it's important to kind of be as objective as possible. Um, because okay. I know that I, I wanted that when I was on the other side of these conversations, right? Right. And, right. and, I, and I was having people talk to me. So, okay. So, so yeah. then the way how, like, and maybe you'll be able to critique me on this, but the way how I yeah. see SC and the way how I go about it is yes. like if I had a tool and a set of tools, right? So like yeah. I have a tool chest and like my goal in the conversation is to have a positive conversation about a, a, a deeply held belief with someone. And if we could explore that, figure out how they got to their conclusions, maybe shed some light on some things they never thought about, that's all great. But SE yeah. is one of many valuable tools that I have in my box of tools that I use to get that job done. It's not just the only tool that I use. I'm wondering, do you, think, do you think of it the same way? And what are some of the other tools that you use in your box other than SE to have a positive conversation with someone? Yeah, absolutely. I feel the exact same way, and I don't want to de-platform other people and say your way of doing things isn't legitimate, um, because I think SE is just one of many ways. Um, I, I believe in a plurality of methods that can be used to kind of have these kinds of discussions. Mm. Um, but, of course, there's never been a street epistemology call-in show, so it's good to kind of <laughs> yeah that there, too, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, so I think, and you'll probably notice this, too, when I actually get into it and we really get this show going, my method is going to be different from yours and it's going right. to be different from Anthony's exactly. and I'm probably going to be trying some different things as well just because of, you know the format's going to be different so you know I, I'm going to be using a mixed method approach by right. the end of it um, I, well yeah I think it's absolutely important that every single person who tries to do SE themselves people who hear about us people who look us up on se-playlist.com check that out and you'll see lots of other videos of other SE enthusiasts around the world utilizing the technique in different ways because by doing it in different ways, we are experimenting, and we're, we're using it as a science to see what works and what doesn't. When we find out something that doesn't work, it's just as useful as figure out something that does work. And the fact that we're all trying to do something different and work with it means that we are willing to evolve this in a really, really cool way 
so that we can have a more optimized approach to talking to people. And I guess really, uh, we got six minutes before at the bottom of the hour and we got to do call uh, station identification. But would you mind talking about some of the other things that you utilize to have a productive conversation aside from just the Socratic examination method? Besides the Socratic method, well, you know, the Socratic method is my primary mode. I will say that. Um, you, you know, I'm, I'm well versed enough in because I was a former Christian and because I like to study things like philosophy and stuff in like my free time that I'm able to kind of provide sometimes there you know a counter apologetic approach or um, you know the other types of this kind of information giving is useful. But we want to try to avoid the backfire effect, which is something that we talk about a lot, which is just you know, giving people this kind of evidence that they're wrong, like giving someone a scientific paper and then mm -hmm. having somebody instead reject it and then hold themselves even stronger to their own beliefs. Right. So, you know, and, and, and trying to avoid that, I try to not use those approaches as often, but only as necessary or when it seems like they are interested in knowing more or in knowing what another side has to think. And then it becomes appropriate for them to kind of accept that evidence. Right. Okay. Um, so yeah, that, that's what I would say. I don't know if that <laughs> answers your question. How do you facilitate conversations to keep people from uh, getting off track or maybe they're talking too long and you need to get them back focused on what you're talking about, or maybe you need to interject yourself into the conversation. So that way you really are having that back and forth and not lost in a preacher mode. What, what that's, other texts do you utilize? Yeah, that's really, really tough because I'm actually trying to – I'm struggling with that a little bit right now, even with these test episodes um, with these call-ins because, you know, I, I realize that there's going to be people watching live and stuff, and, and I have a show to run as well, so it's like it's good to kind of pick things up. So I'm still kind of experimenting with that myself. I actually don't know what the best way is besides – um, having a piece of paper in front of you and writing down what you want to say and what specific <laughs> point you want to talk about. So okay. that you can just, and, and if you have to just say, Hey, can we, can we rewind a bit and talk about this, you know, and, and I, cause I kind of want to explore this, you know, I mean, that's the best way that seems to kind of work out with me so far, but I'd love to know more <laughs> if there are better ways. No, that's actually pretty good. That's what I actually really mm -hmm. like it. I, I think the best thing that we can do is just watch how everybody else is doing it. And when they run into problems like that, the, uh, the, not only like when you run into a problem like this, if you're doing SE, tell everyone else the same problem that you're having. That way we can all know where the problems are and maybe possible avenues to get around them. Um, let me think one last thing. Uh, it, I know you're going to have uh, the eventual troller <laughs> troll call, people calling to your show without the intention to have a, fun, productive conversation, but just trying to get a rise out of you. Have you mm -hmm. already picked a hero that you will emulate with regard to the troll calls? Will you be like a Tracy Harris or a Matt Dillahunty, et cetera? Uh, okay, so I don't know if we're actually going to release this because, like I said, we've been doing recording, so we haven't been doing things, but we kind of already had a thing like that. Already. Oh, really? Really? Test episode. Okay, yeah. okay. And I... Uh, it was my first time handling that kind of situation, and I don't think I did the very best job. I think I did okay. Uh -huh. um, I, I kind of did the, the I would say, maybe the Eric or Jamie method of just, or maybe Matt, I don't know, just saying, like, okay, I, you got to let me do this or else you're done. I have my finger on the drop. <laughs> oh, no. Like, awesome. Uh, mm -hmm. yeah, I, I was like, oh, man, you see this all the time, and now I'm the one with the, with the finger <laughs> on the button. Like, some yeah. people dream to have this. This, this method, well, this you can't method. let them but hijack like, the show. Moment, right? You can't let them take all your time. You, right. you, you got to cut them off at I some point. I didn't want to do that. Yeah, mm -hmm. like I, I really want to have good conversations with people. I don't like being mean to people and shutting people down, but sometimes you have to have a limit. Uh, you sometimes know, and you got to do what you got to do. That's right. So we're talking to yeah. Dan. Dan, objectively Dan, Dan the man, a, mm -hmm. he is a new street epistemology, epistemologist on the scene. He's willing to talk to you about the things that you believe in a really fun, productive way. We're talking about his new show, and we're at the bottom of the hour. Yep. Larry, what's up? Well, you need to do a station identification for sure. Uh, this is WOZO Radio 103.9 LPFM, live right here in Knoxville, Tennessee. Today's Wednesday, July 25th, five months to Christmas, just your first reminder. Mm -hmm. 
and, <laughs> and don't panic. And uh, we're going to take a, sh- a short break like with, with an atheist song. Uh, this is a quiet company that we introduced on the show a few, uh, yeah! a few shows back. And this particular nice. song is called Never Tell Me the Odds. And we'll be back in about five minutes. See you then. Okay. Sure. Dan, there's a... Digital Free Thought Radio Hour on Wozo 103.9 LPFM in Knoxville, Tennessee. Feel free to join in on the conversation at 865-333-5937. That's 865-333-5937. And now, back to the show. Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. Simply the best. And we're back, and you can hear the air conditioning going there. I'll turn it off. It just is a little bit loud. Um, this is WOZO Radio 103.9 LPFM, live right here in Knoxville, Tennessee. Uh, this is the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. It's about 7.30, about halfway through the show. And this is usually where I take a little bit of time to introduce the or tell you about the different atheist societies, the different rationalist groups, the free thought groups here in Knoxville. Uh, but since we have a guest on the line, I'll just give you their names and their website, and you can look them up. First, there's the Atheist Society of Knoxville. It's 16 years old with 850 members. Go to atheists, uh, knoxvilleatheist.com. I'm sorry. I've been there many times. KnoxvilleAtheist.com. Then there's the Rationalists of East Tennessee. They've been around for about 20 years. And they're uh, located at Rationalist.org. And uh, the TV show, we mentioned that a little bit earlier. We told you where you could find it. It's a free thought forum. It's on uh, Comcast Channel 12 between 6.30 and 7.30 every Wednesday night. It just now went off. But be sure to check it out on YouTube by searching for free thought forum Knoxville. And we're back with Dan the Man and Wombat. 
Uh, you want to take it away? Hey, it's the Wombat! It is. Hey, so so we just got back. We're talking with Dan the Man. Objectively, Dan, one of the hottest street epistemology uh, users, practitioners, teachers, mentors that just hit the scene and it's still running. It's got a TV show going on. He's got a, a, a talking tour going down, and he's still taking classes. The kid's doing everything. Sam, mm-hmm. I got a question for you. This is the dark side of SE. Have you ever utilized SE in a way that is not <laughs> socially right? Not not necessarily in a bad way, but like, have you gone to the dark side with your SE at all? Uh, a good example of this would be: I went to a guitar center, right? Can you hear me? Yeah, good? I can hear you. Yeah, okay. yeah. yeah. Check it out. I went to a guitar center. I'm getting a new bass, but I'm playing a bunch of the models that they have on the floor, the floor models. Because, pro tip, don't buy a brand new bass if they haven't set it up. Play the ones that are already set up on the aisles and see which one you like the most and get a floor model. Because to get a floor model, I've, I've checked this up on Reddit before, you should be able to get a discount at least 10% off, the, off any floor model, which is, like, great. Because if you're already playing it and it's set up great, then that's the one you want. So I'm playing up a floor model, and I'm like, I want this guitar. And I asked one of the guys to come over to me. I'm like, hey, I want this guitar. And he's like, oh, yeah, it's going to cost, you know, so-and-so. I'm like, with that much money, I can just buy a brand new one on Amazon.com. Can you please cut me a deal? I want to get the floor model. And other people have been playing this one. They're like, well, you know, we can't let necessarily do that because we're already selling that at the lowest price. I'm like, I understand, but with that price, I can buy a brand new guitar from Amazon.com. Why would I get a used floor model for the same price when I get a brand new one? It's like, okay, let me talk to my manager. I was like, cool, get your manager. The manager comes by, and he's like, hey, uh, I heard you want to buy uh, this guitar. I'm like, I would if you can cut me a deal. Can we please cut me a deal? I'm being super calm. Like, I'm using all my SC vibe and charm in here. I was like, yeah, please. I'm really, I would love to get a, like some sort of deal that you guys can do. It's like, well, listen, uh, if you want a new one, we can order you a new one. And I'm like, I understand that you can order me one. So can I. I can also order a new one, too. I want the floor model unless you can cut me a deal or else the deal's done. <laughs> and they're like, we can give you 10%. I'm like, cool, awesome. <laughs> but, like, the whole back and forth is very, like, in a street of this month. Like, hey, here's, well, what's the foundation of the reason why you don't want to give me 10%? Well, 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 just sounds like know, bargaining. Like <laughs> <laughs> bargaining. You you have a motive, my friend. That is- I should have. Hey, I, what is the reason why you won't give me ten percent off this guitar? <laughs> and any reason they give me, I'm like, no, no, no. I can do that myself. No, no, no. I can get a new one for that same price, okay. sir. No, no, no. Hey. Hold on, no. Hold on, no. <laughs> Hold on, though. You're trying to lead someone to a conclusion, and, and, and they might have they might have justified reasons for their belief. It may not be faith based, but sure. it may be evidential in the sense oh. that they get fired. Ooh, I like it. I like their job, right? No, I don't know. And, 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 I don't know about that. That's yes. Yeah. I'll say this: uh, uh, all my best to Javier for being so angry when I walked out with that ten percent discount. It's like, you know, if you buy that, you can't return it back. That's your return policy for dental scratches. I'm like, yeah, okay, Javier, we're good, we're good. Trust me, <laughs> fine. I'll enjoy my, I'll enjoy my sweet ten percent off. How about this? Yesterday, yesterday. Here's my other dark street epistemology story. Yesterday. Oh my god. Uh, I, so I, I'm, a, I'm a rebel. I'm, I'm trying it out everywhere. Uh, I had to cancel my car insurance policy because it turned out that Progressive was completely screwing me over, and I was switching to Geico because, surprisingly, they actually have accurate commercials. You will save a lot of money if you switch. So props okay. to them. So I, switched right. to, so I switched to Geico, but I needed to cancel my Progressive. The thing is, I was still on the uh, policy, and if you cancel, you actually have to pay a cancellation fee. And so in my head, I'm like, I don't want to pay a cancellation fee. I'm going to call them up, and we're going to figure out a way to cancel without paying the fee. Here's the thing. I call up the guy. The guy's like, oh, why are you canceling it? I lied. I apologize for lying. But I did say, hey, I gave away my car for free. Uh, it's long story short. I'm moving to California. I'm not moving to California. But I knew the call okay, that I was talking. Wait. Hey, 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 I know, I know the number that I'm calling is a California area code. So I'm like, hey, I'm moving to California. He's like, oh, really? I'm in Sacramento. I'm like, 
oh yeah, I'm gonna go to Chico pretty soon. It's like, oh, Chico's really hot. And I'm like, yeah, Chico's so hot right now because I had my ex girlfriend tell me like what the temperatures were in, in California ahead of time. So I'm like, yeah, I know it's gonna be like 97 degrees tomorrow. It's gonna be 104 degrees. I'm like, yep, yeah, yep. Um, we're having like a nice rapport building session uh, going on. And then I'm no. like, hey, I need to cancel my car insurance. He's like, hey, you know what? I'm gonna give you the rest of your policy money back to you. So not only did I not have to pay the cancellation fee, I actually got more money back. The, the, <laughs> the, the opinions, right. the Look, opinions of the, 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 the talent on the show are not necessarily okay, those of the management, nor do we one condone, time, su- condone time, such activities. <laughs> Look, okay, look, I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to have to denounce this man from our movement. Right. Yeah. <laughs> he anymore. I think, I, I, I don't know about that. I don't know. But having a calm disposition, though, <laughs> being able to rationally analyze things, I mean, that's a, that's a lot of things. That, and okay. that's part of the street at this small but I don't know if that's everything. That's mm. I don't know about that. Right, so then I'll ask you, what makes... What's the straw that breaks the camel back? What makes something street epistemology and what makes something not street epistemology? I like to ask that. How about that? That's okay, how- the, here's the number one difference for me. The number one difference for me is, am I telling somebody what to think? Mm. Am I telling somebody that this is what's true and this is what's not true? I like it. Not, that's the difference for me because as soon as I have an agenda, as soon as mm. I'm saying, you need to believe this, because, like, that's the difference between what I was doing before as a Christian, going out and telling people of the gospel and that this was true and stuff, and doing what I'm doing now with street epistemology, is I'm letting people make their own decisions. You know, and I am going to ask questions, because that's about as much as I can do, ethically speaking, on my part, um, especially if I don't know them. But at the end of the day, they have to decide that themselves. And they can choose to, you know, check out my perspective and see what I think, and I'm glad to tell them if they want to know. But using the method for leading people down a certain path, uh, I don't think that's what I do. I don't know. I could be wrong. And uh, but certainly not for monetary gain. I mean, let's, let's <laughs> make that point. No, I haven't made any money off this. If anything, I've lost money. Yeah, see here. Yeah. <laughs> I see it as an investment, though, because, like, I would never have, like, a, a, rec- a portable sound studio if I didn't, like, just, like, bite the bullet and start buying that stuff. I'll ask this, though. Um, so it seems that it's it, street epistemology, and I agree with you. Street epistemology is not about selling an idea; it's about inquiring and like Correct. listening for the most part. Yes. Do yes. you believe that Gnostics are better suited at SC compared to agnostics? And do you know what the difference between those two are for our audience? You want to explain those the difference between uh, Gnostic and agnostic, and do, which do you feel is better suited for SC, if if any at all are better suited? So I'm assuming you're talking about, about God beliefs and yeah. you're saying someone who is Gnostic being someone who knows for sure there's a God. Or, has or knows for sure that God. there's no God. Or knows for or sure that there's no God. So there's no God. Same with an agnostic saying, you know, um, for myself, I, I don't think that the term is mutually exclusive with atheism. I think that's right. kind of um, a misnomer. Exactly. Um, but, but I think that just opens up the question of, like, what is knowledge and how do we get it? Or how do we justify our beliefs? You know, um, and if anybody who is saying that they know something um, I, is welcome to use the method just as much as somebody who says that they're not sure that they know something. Um, but if they're going to apply it to themselves and their own beliefs, you know, that's a different story, right? Um, so, right. again, I even said this at the conference. I would love to teach this method at a Christian conference hmm. or a Hindu conference or anywhere else because I think the method is objective enough at the start that everybody should be at least trying it out, at least, you know, seeing what's there, because it is based on kind of this older, ancient, philosophical, uh, Socratic method. Um, and I, I'm very comfortable with that. I'm very comfortable with other what, people of other religious backgrounds. Why did you use the modifier at the start? You said the method Sorry, was... Sorry, again, I couldn't hear you. You said that the, the method was effective, uh, at least at the start. Uh, why did you use that, uh, that qualifier? Well, because if somebody comes to a different conclusion uh, based off of, you know, using this method, I would be very surprised and I would talk to people. But, you know, I'm not going to say that they are necessarily doing something wrong unless I really think that they are. Um, for me, using the method, along with a lot of other things, led me to the conclusions that I hold now. But well, sure, but it, doesn't, it, it won't it, necessarily. It if you have an open mind, uh, the Socratic method will can affect you as well as the the listener or the co-loquitor. 
Uh, I mean, what we're trying to do mm-hmm. is, is, is uh, approach the truth any way we can. We're trying to be honest and, and uh, think about things. That, that's basically what we're trying to convey. I mean, we're not really trying yeah, to, to channel somebody to a conclusion. That's not the point. The point is to uh, ask questions so they get the person to think and, and have a better uh, approach to uh, the conclusions that they're, they're reaching, have a better method. Yeah, yeah, and, and that's how I feel. I mean, it's all about the inquiry. Um, for the most part, people aren't asking themselves these kinds of questions every day, and I'd love for people to start asking themselves these kinds of questions because I think we become better people that way if we know uh, why we believe uh, and the reasons why you know, and, and how we how we got to those reasons, whether those reasons are reliable or not. I mean, these are things I'm thinking about all the time, every day, yeah. um, and it, it's become really useful for me. And it's led me to a lot of new and interesting territory that I want other people to go to, but only if they're willing, right? So, do you feel like the Ray Conference for the world, the Kirk Camerons, et cetera, will be able to effectively utilize SC if they don't necessarily have? a open mindset with regard to what the truth might be or at least or at least even open to questioning their own position like can someone who doesn't question their own idea of what's true and what's not true effectively question other people's idea of what's true and what's not true right i think anybody's capable of questioning other people of their beliefs um it takes an honest person to question yourself Mm -hmm. um and I think that's just the heart of it. You know, um, it's easy to be skeptical of other people and it's easy to, um, you know, kind of do that. But to be skeptical of ourselves takes a lot more integrity and it takes a lot more time as well. So I suppose it's possible that people could use it. But um, I would wonder what their conclusions are. You know, mm. I would wonder if they would reach the same conclusions that I did. And if they've reached different conclusions, I want to know what right. process, what steps took them there. Exactly. Um, but, I, you know, I don't really know a lot of Christians and other people who use the method. For it, so I don't know. It is kind of interesting. We do have uh, some Gnostic atheists in our Facebook group that are beginning to utilize the method. I think one of the most prominent ones is Aaron Ra. Uh, I spoke with him when we went to the uh, Art Museum protest. He had actually utilized free epistemology himself. It didn't work out so well because he, he, he's kind of like a very aggressive way of doing it. But my thought was rough as well. But I feel like with I, I'm speaking candidly here, I feel like if you have a position where you feel like you know something and aren't willing to let that go, regardless of evidence that might be spring up or a conversation that you might have with someone else, you enter into a conversation with a handicap because you're expecting the person that you're talking to to do something that you're not willing to do. And right. you need to have an openness where you're setting an example with the person that you're talking to of, hey, I'm open and I'm willing to learn something. Are you open and also willing to learn something? That is a communication that goes beyond just verbal language. Right. It goes strictly to the thought process that goes behind the kinds of questions that you ask. And if you go into it with that imbalance, I feel like you're going to get imbalance return what you put into that is what you're going to get out of it so what do you think about that wow that's yeah that's a very interesting point i actually got to talk to Aaron this year as well at the american atheist conference he's a he's a pretty awesome guy but yeah he is. yeah um that's really interesting i think that you're probably right um i think what i really want to try to convey is i'm not using this method to make people atheist necessarily right. Um, and, and that's kind of a byproduct of using it, right? And I also right. like to incorporate other kinds of beliefs besides religious ones as well um, and, and try to be as neutral as possible. But, again, I also go into these conversations with the mindset of this person might have reasons for me to believe their position. Exactly. Um, even if I don't disagree right. with it on the outset. And that's, and that's something you have to cultivate. That's something you have to practice um, uh, even even now, as we you, you know, we might consider ourselves more open-minded people, but um, until you actually hit the rubber to the road and you mm. have conversations with people, um, and, mm. and you might get frustrated with these things, and you see how difficult it can actually be to kind of navigate these conversations, um, you see why this kind of practice has to happen. Uh, with being honest, right? right? Everybody's susceptible to it, atheists or, or theists. I mean, anybody in between. We're human. It just happens. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, sure. Let me ask you this. Uh, kind of a deep question. If you couldn't use SE to get through to someone, what would be like a good alternative method? And I'm asking from like, you know, your background as a communications major and maybe some of the other talks that you've had. When you notice that getting to the methodology doesn't work, what other alternatives are there? 
Yeah, I mean, if we're talking about like applied methodologies to examining people's beliefs, yeah, um, I'm not sure. I mean, cognitive behavioral therapy, um, from what I know of it, I'm not trained. Um, it seems to be a, a really good way of talking to people about why they believe what they believe. Um, and that it goes in with the um, intention of actually helping people get out of, you know, um, basically bad mental habits um, and things like that. And so um, what is cognitive behavior? What you call it? Yeah, cognitive behavioral therapy or CBT, as it's also known. What is that? Yeah, it's a, it's a type of therapy for people um, to kind of um, who may have like a cognitive problems and behavior and things like that, or, uh, you know, it deals a lot with anxiety and, and people who kind of struggle with these kind of, um, I guess the word to use is like mental issues, kind of, um, uh, like with this work in thinking, would this yeah. work for people who think Magmar is the best Pokemon of the original okay. 150? All right. All right. Oh, Stick the question. Oh, I asked you a question. I asked you a well, question. It was nice being on this show. But, um, <laughs> I, I can't. I can't deal with this right now. You know, that's just duck look, pipes that are weak against water. Um, is the best. Is that effective? Like, look, are, I was. I was ten years old. All right. I, all right. I Magmar was my favorite Pokemon, and I'm not ashamed. I'm not okay. ashamed. Uh, what do you think about, so I have, I have maybe some couple ones. I'm just throwing them out to you. I don't know if these are good or, or bad, but I like okay. the idea of listening. Even if you can't come up with the questions to like try to explore the belief more, I find like most of what I do in SE is just listening very, very carefully to what someone's saying, rephrasing back the words that they're saying and giving them an opportunity to just slowly think about what they're, what they strongly believe and condensing it down to words. I found that mm -hmm. the process is just hearing them out and repeating the back the same words to them and allowing them to process what they're saying with their ears is monumentally helpful to, for people, even if we agree on a topic, because it just gives them a chance to condense the thoughts into verbal wordage that we can use, and, and, and that clarifies some things for them even in that process. What do you think? Yeah, yeah, that's a great point. Um, so I call this entry like my Zen state. Ooh. to people you know that i'm trying to be as neutral and as distant and dispassionate when talking to somebody about these things as i can be so that i'm not letting my own kind of feelings and bias get in the way i think the best way to cultivate that um because it is something that uh you should try to practice that is i would say either picking up some sort of meditation practice i'm 100 percent serious about that oh, or cool. or um find people who you agree with mostly but disagree with on some things. For example, if you identify as a liberal, right, mm. find a liberal Christian to talk to. Oh! See what, can, see what you can get to and find common ground with first. Yeah. Develop that. I like and it. And then see where your differences <laughs> lie. Because, I like it. Yeah, because you're, you're going you're gonna to have a better conversation on the outset because you're going to find a lot of things that you do agree about. And you're going to find that your response to them is probably going to be a lot more respectful and better on the outset because you've already built that um, respect in the first place. I love on, that. Um, you're coming to police, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's such great advice. Find common ground is like one of the most important things that you can do too. Uh, not only just listening, but finding common ground is such a huge thing. Um, let me think. Oh, man, that's so good. Confining from what about um, – Jeez, that's just a good point. I don't know if I got something on top of that. Yeah. What are, yeah, yeah. Oh, how about this? Um, you know how we talk about it's important to find methodologies and, and like, we should target the methodology? Similar to common ground, because I feel like this has actually worked for me sometimes when questions of methodology didn't work as well, um, mm -hmm. setting up an objective that we can both agree that we both want. Like, yeah. here's a goal that both of us want, Right. What's the best way to get to that goal? And using a goal-oriented approach is a good way that I feel like could be adopted into, like, SE, but, or, but more in the sense of, like, hey, here's some other B plans to have. If you're being stonewalled when you ask them what's your method that you use to get to there. They don't want to answer that. They're, they're using preach mode. Okay, well, yeah. here's a goal that we both agree is valuable, right? Yeah. How can we get to that goal together, you and I? Right? Can we think of ways to get there together? And, and that approach works just as well. Like that common ground, common goal approach works really effectively, I think. Yeah, um, yeah. So like, I, I think a good example of that might be, uh, let's say you're talking to somebody who believes something because of personal experience. Mm. And you're saying, well, I want to be convinced of this 
or I have the, uh, somebody else who we're trying to convince. But if we both agree that a personal experience isn't going to be as convincing to me or somebody else, what's a better way that we can find to convince people that this is true? Yeah, so, that's great. Uh, our, you know, that, that's just an example coming off the head. But like, um, I, I, I like that approach, that idea of setting goals. I think that's, that's interesting. Cool. Um, we got five minutes left in the show. We're going to be ending pretty soon. I want to ask, can we try to do something SC related real quick right now? Uh, yeah, what do you want to you do? Me? Okay, so here's my claim, and then I want you to SC me on the best floor can. It's an okay. opinion, but, you know, we're going to have some fun with it. All right, I'll take all it very right, seriously. All right. all right, I believe. I swear, I swear, I swear, if you're going to do what I think you're going to do. It is not, it is not, it is not. Okay. It was completely different. Right. It's completely different. Okay. I believe to 100% certainty, 100% confidence, that a pizza slicer should go in the knife drawer. I feel like that's obvious. It has a handle. It has a blade. It's a knife. I don't care if it's in a circle. It should go in the knife drawer. I'm absolutely, terribly, 100% confident about this. And if I see it in a miscellaneous drawer, I'm going to freak out. <laughs> Sounds more okay, like well, an wait, OCD issue. <laughs> no, it is not. It is reality. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, well, I, you know, normally the first thing I would try to do is make sure we're agreeing on all the terms. We're defining terms. But I okay. think I know what a pizza slicer is. And I don't, yeah. I don't know if I want to argue with you on the definition of pizza slicer. A pizza slicer is a rotational cutting device, much like a knife, which is for cutting devices. It's a, a knife is a okay. cutting device. Pizza but, slicer is a cutting device. It's a type of knife. So, all right. Okay. So, what's your reason for for having this belief? Why do you feel like pizza slices need to go in the people put drawer? them in the wrong drawers? They're in the drawers with the spatulas. They're in the drawers with the baking roller things. Like, no. Okay, but this I, is a knife. How, what's your criteria for right and wrong drawers? How did you determine that those are the wrong drawers? Well, if you have more than one drawer, you will dedicate certain things to that drawer. And, I, and I'm fine with people having a junk drawer. I'm fine with people having a miscellaneous drawer. But if you have a knife drawer, if you have a knife drawer, the pizza slicer should go in that drawer. If you don't, that's fine. But if you do, the pizza slicer should be in the knife drawer. It's as obvious as... You know, sunlight. It's just what it is. It's a knife. It has a handle. It has a blade. It's sharp. It could cut you if you're searching in the other drawers for it. Put it in the knife drawer. This sounds like all, okay, all, um, a lot like absolute certainty. I'm absolutely yeah. certain that I'm correct on this. That's a weak position. <laughs> I, I, oh my god! I, I, this is so interesting. I, I, okay, so <laughs> what, if, what if the okay? So if the manufacturer came out tomorrow and said this is actually the right way to put away the, this this knife drawer, so do we create this pizza slicer and this is the way you're supposed to do it? You're not supposed to put it in this drawer. Would that lower your confidence in how you're supposed to arrange your cutlery? My confidence would be lowered, but also my confidence in America because <laughs> America knows better. And knives are. Pizza slicers, pizza slicers are nice. It has a handle, it has a blade. What am I, what's the disconnection here? So some, some things we talk about on SE is when to stop an SE conversation. And I think this is a really <laughs> great example of if you feel like you're in danger or if you feel like you just can't change the person. <laughs> okay. I said my confidence was more. One I minute. My confidence would go down if the One manufacturer minute. said, hey, don't put this in your knock door. I'd be like, fine. One minute. I'm okay. upset. Final my words. My confidence is down. Sure. I got it. One minute. Well, final words. All right. I think, I think, that, I think that's it. I think as far as you're open to your belief being changed, I am. You know, I don't, I don't think I have evidence to prove that you're wrong otherwise. So I think so. Can we, I think so we better I, I, just affirm it and say he's right and let it go. What do you think? Yeah, yeah. For, for my health, it's for you know, Stacey's yeah. health, I think that that's what we need to do. Okay, well, this is Daughter 5, and I'm affirming that we did, in fact, evolve from filthy monkey men. And uh, we've got on our show today, we've got Wombat, and we've got his friend Dan. Dan's going to start a new show in Austin, Texas. Hopes that you'll tune in and find out more about We're so the proud street, of you, Dan. You're doing so great job. Thank you. Say goodbye, y'all. Uh, goodbye. Follow me. Yeah, uh, objectively, Dan is my name on Twitter, and again, find me on the uh, Facebook page for street epistemology and stuff. Definitely check out my stuff on my YouTube, all that. So, thank okay. you again, guys. Sounds okay. And I only have to say one thing: Squirtle for life. All right, that's well, fine. You, have, you can have your opinion on the Squirtles <laughs> and your cutlery. That's all good. Okay. That's uh, cool. fine by me. Okay, daughter five saying everybody's going to somebody else's hell. Don't sweat it. And we'll see you next week, 7 o'clock, same station, same day. Go. You're listening to the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour on Wozo 103.9 LPFM in Knoxville, Tennessee. 
feel free to join in on the conversation at 865-333-5937. That's 865-333-5937. And now, back to the show. Digital Free Thought Radio Hour.